As far as length goes, uh, you'll get the question all the time. Mm -hmm. Guys will ask, like, how do they run? Um, I I really think that our, you know, if you if you go straight off of EU numbers, and you'll get some guys that are like mm -hmm. they've worn Scarpa or Sportiva or, or Zamblin, and they're like, oh, I'm a I'm a 45, you know, 45. And, and yeah, it's like. The conversion from brand to brand is not equal. Like in, yeah. in Zamberlin, I've tried on their boots. I'm not, you know, I'm a 45.5 uh, in Zamberlin, but I'm a 45 in Crispy. Mm -hmm. um, it, so that, I wouldn't necessarily go off that. We we feel like our, our US conversion size is pretty comparable to whatever you wear. And I would say 90%, 90 95% of the time, you know, if I had 100 guys I'm putting, putting their feet in boots, 95 of those guys are going to wear the same size as their street shoe. You'll get guys that are like, well, I wear, you know, there's a lot of guys out there that, that wear work boots, like whites, for example. Um, and whites are notorious for being like either small, like they're just, they don't match up. So cowboy boots or work boots, I wouldn't necessarily go off that. I would t ask a guy like, what, what, what size tennis shoe, you know, running shoes, what do you wear? I'm a 12. Let's try in a 12. Mm -hmm. And I feel very confident that most of the time it's going to be that every blue moon, get a guy that'll size up, and, it, and even more rare is a guy that'll size down. Um, but as far as width goes, like I said, back to what I was saying before, the philosophy of Crispy was, was built on comfort mm -hmm. and all day use rather than, uh, like a climbing shoe is specific timed use, or you know, uh, uh, you know, guys like you know, climbing fifth class mm -hmm. in a boot, it's a very minimal amount of time that he's gonna be utilizing that, so precision and narrowness is more important there. Um, on our boots, like a generous toe box area um, is going to be more standard. And most of the models you're gonna find that, that if guys like, well, on, a, on a, a different type of European boot, I have to go to a wide, that's probably not gonna be the case. Unless someone wears a wide in like standard US sure. shoes, they're not gonna be a wide in, in a crispy. A couple of models that you have, uh, uh, that you'll have on Go Hunt, um, the Thor, Sometimes guys will say it runs a little bit narrower than, for example, of course, than, than like Guide in Nevada. Mm -hmm. um, Brickstall, even though the Brickstall is narrower through the, through the middle of the boot, um, surprisingly that forefoot has a lot, yeah, of, lot of room. Um, I thought, no way is that gonna work for me on my sheep hunt, and it was like money. Hmm. Um, another boot in our, in our lineup, like the crossover, which you guys are gonna carry, Crossover is just a hair narrower than like Nevada, but again, I I I I would say my foot's like slightly wider than normal, but I don't I don't own a wide pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. um, I still ran the crossover for an entire season. It wasn't that big a deal. Colorado Summit maybe just a little narrower than than Nevada, but again, so as far as fit goes, lengthwise, I would run people. Okay. You know, you're you're going to be fine with your standard shoe size. Width wise. Um, you should be good for a standard foot. And you guys will be carrying um, Guide Nevada. Um, these are these are these are a staple. Like the the Nevada, I I tell everyone, Guide Guide and Nevada are big brother little brother. Uh, the Hunter, which is a ten inch boot, um, is is you know kind of a little bit different because it also is a more stiffer flex. It's really before we came out Brickstall, the guy the Hunter was really that that sheep hunting boot. And the guide still, a lot of, guide goes on a lot of, a lot of sheep, boot, sheep, sheep hunts. Specifically, especially for guys that are like, I want one boot that basically I can do most anything I can, most anything I want to do in Western US, but I am going to go on a sheep hunt and I don't want to buy a specific boot that I'm not going to, you know, that's going to sit in my closet. Uh, Nevada, and guide are really like a workhorse. And, and I, I tell people like, Nevada's like mom's cooking. Like it, it just, it feels good to come home. Like <laughs> I've tried all these boots. I mean, I've worn them all except for, uh, except for this guy, the Thor. And I like them all. I've, I've enjoyed hunting in them all, all of them, but there's nothing like putting on my Nevadas. They're just, they're just solid. There are three flex on our scale of one to five. So right in the middle, good torsional stability. Um, Nice, easy flex in the toe. Guided the same way. Um, the only difference is the height in this. 
one thing I'll, uh, as far as ingredients goes, oh, the other difference is on the Nevada, like we do use a calfskin mm -hmm. leather on the inside where the guy, we can't. Whenever you see this uh, this orange, this should I should have told you this, this orange tab, this ABSS, this is called ankle bone support system. Um, what this is, is in this area here, <coughs> this, um, we've taken some memory foam and it's designed to fit around where your ankle bone is going to be located. And so as you lace up the boot, that memory foam conforms around your mm -hmm. ankle bone. Um, uh, like a side effect is it will increase like blood flow in, a, in an area where there's like limited limited blood flow. It's almost like, you know, when you're, when you're wearing knee pads and some of the hunting pants, um, you know, aside from, you know, your, your knees are warmer, it's gonna increase blood flow in, the, in, a, in a needed area. But the, the purpose is to, uh, to add ankle support so you, you know, limit limited situation of rolling. The cool thing is, is without, you know, people think, wow, it's gonna become like stiff and it, it still maintains the, the, the usability of the shaft of the boot. Even a boot like, the summit that doesn't have it added ankle support, the shaft of the boot is going to give you something. Like there's there's material and foam and other things in there that provide that structure, but the the ABSS is just going like one step further, um, and it's amazing. Even for guys that are like, oh my my ankles are perfect, I've never had an ankle issue. If you're in technical training, walking over blowdown, um, like I've had multiple situations where my ankle goes to roll and it rolls and I'm like, you know, kind of hold my breath for a second thinking I'm, I'm going to be, you know, I'm, I'm going to be crawling out of the mountains yeah. and I'm like, whoa, so my ankles are rad. And he, and he is this hitting home too? Yeah. <laughs> we went on a hunt this year and I literally rolled my ankle like 15 times. For real? Oh, it's yeah. incredible. He got to be like, what is that sound? <laughs> popping right there? Yeah. Snap, bad. snap, snap. That was really bad. We were like, um, yeah, the, la the last two miles was just straight angry hiking, yeah. just <laughs> Branson just going, like, I'm done. That's when you want to call in for a heli lift, oh, yeah. <laughs> knee back. You need that. Yeah, I need that support. Right so, there. like, pass this boot around. I want you to reach in, um, just reach in the boot, Re like, reach both, like, one hand in and then kind of feel the thickness of the leather mm -hmm. here and the, mater the other materials and then kind of reach back to that spot and you'll feel... And then you can kind of feel the zone of where that oh, yeah. that is. There's a, there's a little bit of a ridge, yeah. um, and it's it's pretty remarkable. I don't, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I it's I can't recall anyone saying like, hey, I actually snapped my ankle, rolled it. Yeah, it's, I think it's got to be pretty bad, but it's it's a great add-on, um, and it's only you know you, that that little orange tab will call that out. There are a couple of boots like I think this Colorado, yeah, the Colorado has it. <laughs> Once in a while, once in a while at the factory, we'll get a boot that like the brick that has it and but like slip one. Huh? Yeah, the orange tag is <laughs> MIA. I'm like, trust me, it's in there. So, Guide in Nevada are essentially your 10 inch or 8 inch high. Um, you know, running the the polyurethane dual density midsole, um, Vibram Vibram sole on the bottom. And this is our, our crispy proprietary uh, pattern that, that Vibram developed with us. You're still, your soles feel more tacky than other soles. They are. It's a, it's a gore insulation on these. <laughs> and then on the Wild Rock, which you guys won't, don't have right now, Wild Rock's a 400 gram primal off insulation. And then we're building a, an 800 gram equivalent. It's the, it's the 600 Duratherm with the standard um, gore booty with the small insulation on it that is equivalent to 200, which maximizes for 800. So that that's really it's personal preference, and more guys that are like, you know, if you got a guy in in Montana that's buying boots from you and he's he's accustomed to rolling, you know, to work in this kind of boot, he's gonna gravitate right yeah. here. Um, versus a guy that might be like maybe sits in an office all day long, and he's like, you know, I, I usually use trail runners, um, but I'm I've been hating life in those, or I'm, you know, I've been using the Danner, which you know they've, mm -hmm. they've made a great boot for years. But I, you know, I'm ready to jump into a crispy, and I don't, I don't really need a high boot. It's like, you know, the the Nevada. So that's Guy Nevada. Those would be, uh, those would be awesome. The um, the one boot here that you're carrying, um, the the Colorado. The Colorado came about. The Colorado takes the three flex of a of a summit. Basically, we took the upper of the summit, um, added ankle bone support system. Took the uh, took the sole and midsole combination off the brick stall, mm. and the flex of the brick stall four, which is the brown brick stall, and came up with the Colorado. 
The reason being for the Colorado is we, we had seen a lot of guys in the brick stall say, hey, I, I would like to be in a synthetic, but I want something for either steeper, more nasty terrain, I'm a goat hunter, but I don't want leather. So he said, let's answer that question with, with the Colorado. Instead of the rubber rand, which you see on the, uh, the Nevada or on the brick stall, um, this has polyurethane coated leather. So we've taken leather and coated it with polyurethane and we triple stitch it with a Kevlar Dyneema combination. Dyneema, if you guys are in climbing, you know is using climbing rope. Um, even the Kevlar by itself is not as bulletproof or bomber as you think it would be. Mm -hmm. um, but adding Dyneema to that thread makes it like pretty dang solid. And the other thing we're able to accomplish with leather, a leather um, coated rand is that we can go in shape, in a shape and a, do a zone a much, much different than we can with just rubber. It is just a wee bit lighter as well. <laughs> so we're able to maintain a light boot. So the Colorado is, is a boot that's gonna be in your lineup with Go Hunt. Um, and then the Vibram sole on the bottom, this is, a, is not a proprietary crispy, but it's one that we've, we've, we utilize. This is a three, this is a four flex. Um, versus a three flex way you'll find in the summit and in the, uh, the the Nevada, but I think because of my my impression is that because of the the synthetic and it's just it I would I personally say it's a 3.5, but we categorize it a four. Um, it's super comfortable. I use this I've used this like all last summer and most of this you know early part of the season. Mm -hmm. uh, the year before I used it a bunch um, and I really really like it. So yeah, I. I think you guys will really dig that boot um, for a lot of, it's really a lot of you know, wide range of use, not just for steep steep stuff. The crossover comes out, comes out of, yeah, because of its name, this, this tongue is, is a single piece. I don't know if you guys can see, it just it essentially crosses over. The only action, only place where that there's actually more of a tongue piece is right at that top, right there. You can kind of see that fold all the way. This material on the top of the crossover tongue is a, is a stretch nylon. Similar to like a soft shell, if you feel this, it, it performs much like the soft shell. This fabric we also, you also find in the, in the gusset of the, the brick stall. You'll see it a little bit here in that Tiva, not quite as dense. Um, you'll see it in the Thor, and then you'll see it in Laponia and also in Valdres. Um, it, it, it breathes incredibly well. Um, that's why like in the Valdres, for example, you've got you know, all leather and then that, that uh, it's non-insulated and then it'll have that stretch nylon in the tongue and that stuff breathes like it's all, and we sell that boot. That boot's like a Arizona, New Mexico, Southern Utah, mm -hmm. a guy that wants, hey, I want protection of leather, but I want to breathe extremely well and that's where that boot shines. So the crossover does the same thing. It, the height wise, it's, um, it's right at that three quarter height. Um, to be honest, this was a boot that I had, um, I had a pair of Patagonia shoes when I first got back into hunting, like 11 years ago or 12 years ago. Had a pair of Patagonia shoes. They were made by Merrill, and there was a shoe almost identical to this. Gore-Tex, full round, full, full rand. They had a rubber rand on that one, uh, suede leather. And so when I saw this, a similar type of this this boot in the Crispy Factory. I was like, we've got to bring this in. <coughs> it's become kind of a boot that a lot of guys will use if they want to go from, let's say, like a Solomon or a Montrell or a kind of a trail running slash light hiker. I mean, you could run a 5K in this if you had to. Yeah. Like, no big deal if you're running in and out of checking trail cameras, which I've done in this in this boot. Um, different Vibram sole. The depth, again, not quite as, as deep. Like, like, I've successfully had a couple of really good stocks in this where I felt like I almost didn't need to take off my boots. Um, Breathes really well. You've got lacing that comes down all the way into the toe area. So if you do want to cinch it down and get a little more precision in your step, um, you can do that and kind of you know cinch that down if you're in technical training. It's really about a two flex. It's not, you know, it's it's not quite as stiff as as Summit, but that's also why you know this is such a sweet like sweet boot. Uses the EVA midsole. Um, and then the, the polyurethane coated rand. This is only double stitched on this. Um, this is, it's, it's a great, it's a great little boot. Um, like I said, there are, we have a lot of guys, we've got, got a couple guys in our office that wear this every single day. Mm. It's kind of their go-to. I almost always wear it with a short gator, like the, mm -hmm. you know, from um, yeah. OR or 
Sitka or I think uh, First Light, their, their gator would be really good. So that's kind of a great combination. It does have this this lace loop right here. This is actually a almost like climbing rope spec right here. And I, I probably run it about half the time. You guys can play around with it. Yeah, sometimes I just don't want to bother um, with it so I don't really go through it. But other times if I know I'm going to be going up or down steep terrain or doing a lot of side hilling and I want to make sure my ankle just kind of stays in there. I'll use that, but a lot of times I'm just I'm just lacing it up and going. Is that connected to the lacing on the back right there with your fingers? It's not, so lacing. that's a great great observation. Um, this is this lacing right here is actually um, it syncs up with a gator that Crispy oh. built. So I mean, it's it's really more of like a brush gator that they that they um, they use in Europe, which unlike our gators, like they basically go around. This mm -hmm. thing is basically like a. A piece that it, yeah it clips in here. <laughs> it goes there and it has these has it goes around and has these clips that clip into there gotcha. and there. So we'd like to it's it's a no that's a great great question. It, we'd like to look at that as potentially a development piece where we can have a gator that clips yeah. here and here and does not go underneath the boot. Because the bottom part always tears on those. Yeah, it's, no, the, the, the sicker ones I run like the, even that metal cord yeah. just gets shredded. Then like it's really great when you touch it and you get like oh, the best yeah, slivers. <laughs> Lovely. Love it. A lot of electrical tape down there before. <clears throat> but one thing you'll notice like on the Laponia, just as a G Wiz, we don't have it here, but the um, there is a piece like this that goes through around the back and that actually does come into play. The SF is a very specific um, boot. This is this is your sheep hunting, goat hunting boot. Um, it's a five flex, which is our stiffest uh, flex that we make. Um, I still get guys, you know, from from Alaska, like ah, I want something a little stiffer, like a coal flak or a full-on glacier boot. This is not crampon compatible. Some guys want to be in a ski boot, basically, and and have the boot sustain them. And that's really, as you get stiffer flex, that's what you know. The boot is then going to sustain your foot and your platform. You guys, you guys have been in plenty of hunts where that's required. Um, so the Brickstall, the Brickstall SF is the black one. Um, it is quite stiff, I mean, torsionally, but I get it. I have a number of sheep hunters that say like this, for, you know, for sheep boot, it's extremely forgiving. Um, and again, when I, when I use mine, I use the brown version, which is a four flex versus a five flex of the black and orange. Um, I probably did, you know, six or seven solid hikes. I wanted to make sure and it did, the break in did take a little bit more for my foot to become accustomed to a little bit more of a stiffer flex. Um, as I said before, it's got the stretch nylon in the tongue, uh, which creates almost like a sock type fit. It's really, really comfortable. You just slide your foot into there. ABSS, it's got an ankle bone support system, uh, 200 grams uh, equivalent insulation. Um, but because that, lay, that stretch nylon goes all the way down the bottom, you will notice if, if you guys have a chance to hunt in these, like if you cross like a cold, cold stream, you'll feel that temperature change on that tongue like almost immediate. Um, lacing down to the toe in an asymmetrical shape just allows, uh, as you cinch that down, it, it really pulls towards that big toe, which is typically used like when you're on, on edges. Yeah, when you're towing off, either front pointing or side hilling or on like stones or rocks that are, you know, are edging. The cool thing about the brick stall, even in the SF, is guys are finding like on this terrain, they still do fairly well. It's not just built for like this yeah. terrain, which which is a big difference between like your your more traditional like plastic boot or, or sheep boot where you just suffer until finally you get on steeps. That also has um, see that little loop right there. Yeah. Again, yeah, it's built in for for that gator. In the past, we've always used Cordura, which is this fabric up here. In this and and now we we're using what's called PU Tech polyurethane tech, there's, there's another use for that awesome material. So we take, uh, the company that, that we work with takes uh, Cordura and then weaves polyurethane into the strength of that. So two things that happen there, number one is it becomes more impenetrable from thorns or mesquite or, or brush, or whatever that can, can sometimes work its way through Cordura. Mm -hmm. uh, and number two, is it also will provide a little bit more structure. We think uh, by, by some tests, it's up to 20 times stronger mm. than Cordura or more impenetrable, uh, but still breathes um, fairly well. And, and then secondly, is we expect that it's going to add more structure to the boot. So outside of just the wire, uh, the wrapping framework, it's also going to add like 
maintain the structure of the boot rather than get collapsing in it. Um, we got suede in here, uh, Cordura through the tongue for added breathability. Uh, the Wyoming and the Idaho both have the ABSS, the Anglophone Support System, mm -hmm. on the inside. Um, it's really rare that we ever get a leak. Um, one thing that, that people sometimes say is like, why don't you put more protection in the boot? Um, and it'd be great, but there's a balance between, like Gore, Gore only is, will certify our boots if the, if the material that goes on top of the Gore can allow for breathability. So it's just like some insulation. There's some insulations that are real fragile, like Finsulate, that you have to use a layer of glue to adhere to the gore membrane. Now in that case, it's like, great, you've, you've added, you know, you've, you're keeping it dry from, from water from the outside, but now there's no longer a breathability aspect because you've used an entire layer of glue. Same thing with protection. When if you add like a layer of protection, you know, some sort of Kevlar or other things, then you're starting to inhibit the breathability of the boot. And we're all, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a key aspect. So Gore certifies like all of our products based on what type of material in the makeup. And as a partner with Gore, they're in, they're in, our, they're in our factory uh, on a pretty regular basis and testing. And there's a machine that they use there to test um, waterproofness and other things like that. So the Wyoming and the Idaho are essentially big brother, little brother. They both are a three flex, which is pretty standard. That's the same flex you see in the in the Nevada. The one thing about the Idaho and the Wyoming, they're built on the same last as the Nevada and Guide, but because they use fabric, um, the toe box seems to be a little bit more generous. Our heel cup in all, almost all our boots is rather narrow, mm -hmm. so it creates really a good cockpit. And if you t if you team that up, if you don't if you have like high arch like me, if you team that up with an insole. It creates all, I mean, a really good stability. And you even had guys that say, I've got, I've got real narrow feet, but somehow your boots, you know, Work. do well. But the only difference between the two is essentially the height. Okay. It creates side hilling. I mean, this thing side hills like 100 to 1 over like a, like a standard hiker that you see from like Merrill or, mm -hmm. or you know, whoever's making uh, kind of a light height or a low, a renegade, which is a great boot. Um, but it's not, that's built for more trail use. This is built for hunting. Mm -hmm. um, and then and the difference being in is that uh, that stiffness and the torsional stability so that when you're side hilling or front pointing, it's going to be money. We uh, don't have a full ran. This is just this is suede on the back. Uh, and then polyurethane coated toe cap and partial ran. Uh, PU Tech, we included that here. You've still got that optional lace loop on the side, which you can employ. Or uh, or just not utilize that, and then the stretch stretch nylon in the tongue, all the way down, just really ramps up breathability. Most of you guys are like, hey, I want a real active shoe, and I'm I want lightweight, and I want to go fast, and I want to stay dry. And it's like, well, Thor's your Thor's your 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 jam, your jam for nice, sure. Nice, sweet, sweet. It's that's a great boot. So the Thor, both colors. Um, so new and improved over this over last year is the PU Tech. On, on the fabric, yeah. And that's gonna be that's gonna be awesome. I think I, a lot of people that have had Thor in the past, mm -hmm. are gonna look forward to upgrading, I guess, to the to the new Thor. Um, because the tread depth, you may find some super users that will they'll they'll torch this in a in a good seat. You know, if they're a really 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 active guy and always hunting, they might go through that in a year. Again, we can resole that. Last one, Ativa. Yeah. This is a brand new concept for us, but the Ativa is, is a cool concept uh, from the ground up. Um, Fetty designed it. Um, it runs an EVM midsole. It's a non-gore, so it's a highly, highly breathable shoe. Leather through here. This kind of mesh through this side. It's got a zip lacing. It is built with a board lasting system, so it has a continuous flex and a little bit stiffer than you would typically find. Yeah in a shoe like this, polyurethane coated leather on this toe cap, just to give it a little more like protection in that toe area. And then one of the things that, that about the sole that's different than any of our boots is, is we're using, um, and I was telling Trail you about this at the ATA show, is we're using uh, light base, which is a new technology from Vibram. And what, uh, what Vibram was able to do is they were able to minimize the amount of rubber, or reduce the amount of rubber by about a third. Um, and, and then instead of using more rubber compound in the sole itself, you can tell this is really, really thin. 
they've taken nylon and they've woven it into the core of the of the sole shape. Um, when I was at uh, when I was in Italy at the Vibram R and D location, like we were weighing like same sole, one with light base, one standard, and and it was about a third of difference. This it still uses that tacky rubber, but it's just so light. It's it's amazing. We've been testing and Sol and Solomon did some testing, and other brands have done some testing on the road shoe. Ultra has a new shoe out that uh, that I've actually bought, and I, that's why I'm throwing in. Uh, that uses light base, um, but if you think about, if you're able to save a third of the amount of weight in the sole, and I'm not talking this whole boot, but in the sole, over, you know, a five-day hunt, twenty thousand, you know, steps per day, the amount of weight savings yeah. is, is the amount of energy saved is mm -hmm. going to be pretty amazing. So light base is a cool technology that that we'll see expand into the boot side um, as we become more comfortable with the the, the durability of it. In, in the type of areas that we do. So the Ativa is brand new, we're gonna launch on April 1st. We work with, and it's something you guys I don't know, we work with our factory in a much different way than any other boot maker in, you know, any other European boot maker. We work differently than other companies. Like, uh, Italy doesn't necessarily serve up to us, like, all right, here's the menu, guys. Like, you can select what boots you wanna sell. We, as hunters, we also, you know, we, we understand, I mean, we're, we're completely committed to the hunting market. I mean, that's, that's all we basically focus on. Um, and we don't apologize for it, where some European brands are kind of like, you know, tiptoe around it. And we're in, because, it's not because we found that the hunting market is interesting, it's the hunting market has always been part of our, this part of our genetic makeup. Crispy has always made hunting boots. Um, and we make good mountain boots, and we make you know good tactical and, and, and officer boots. So we take in North America, like there's some boots here, like the Brickstall as is. The Brickstall was actually built for the Norwegian market, and we tweaked it to fit the U.S. market. But Colorado, it's a completely ground up build that we did. Like mm -hmm. no one else sells that throughout the world. The Thor as it is, no one else sells that. The Wyoming and Idaho are North American boots. The guide is a North American boot. The Nevada is is legendary. That's just crispy in general. Crossover and the way that it's at is 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 North America, and so we've we work with crispy with our factory in a way that we like say all right let's take like Colorado is a perfect example. We took the existing of the Summit, added ankle support, changed the the sole midsole, changed the flex to fit a particular use that guys were asking us about. Um, and so it, it's just a different relationship. So like feedback that you guys can give us mm -hmm. um, or that we hear from you guys or from hunters, um, we work, we, I mean, we'll go in a couple, we'll go in about a month back to Italy and we'll talk about what's 2021 and 2022 product look like and what are things like light base that, that, that Vibram's coming out with or PU Tech that other partners are coming out with that we can then incorporate into making a boot fit um, you know, a particular style of, of hunting that we do here in North America. So it, it's just a unique, it, we're, I think we're a unique company in the mm -hmm. way that we, you know, our U.S. distribution works so, so, uh, you know, closely in really curating the best type of hunting boot for, uh, for North American hunting.